Hello, my name is Dr. Javier Amador. I'm the founder and director of the LEAP Institute. LEAP Institute was founded after the publication of the book, I'm Not Sick, I Don't Need Help. The subtitle of that book really is the focus of LEAP Institute and this video. The subtitle is, How to Help Persons with Mental Illness Accept Treatment. In this video, you'll be watching me interact with a patient two different times. I'll be playing the role of a psychiatrist, and an actor will be playing the role of one of my patients. The transcript of the videos you're about to watch draws heavily from an interaction I had with one of my real patients, though some changes have been made to protect his privacy. The first video shows me using an approach I used for many, many years, essentially the medical model approach or the psychoeducational approach. In this video, I've decided that my patient would do better on a once monthly injectable antipsychotic medication. And I'm recommending he switch from the pills to the injections. The reason is that, like his father, I strongly suspect that he's non-compliant with his medication. And rather than label him a difficult, non-compliant, or bad patient, I've come to understand him as someone who is in a very difficult position, someone who is kind of stuck because he doesn't understand he has a mental illness. He has lack of insight, or the technical term you'll find in your DSM-4 and in your DSM-5 is anosognosia. This symptom of anosognosia, or lack of awareness of illness, has been found to not improve with treatment. It's been found to not be a coping strategy or denial. Instead, it's truly a symptom of frontal lobe dysfunction, which is very common in schizophrenia and several associated disorders. So much research has been done in this area that as I noted just a moment ago, the symptom is described in both the DSM-4 and DSM-5 as being common and as being among the top predictors of non-compliance with antipsychotic medication. Not surprisingly, this symptom of unawareness also predicts higher relapse rates and a poor course of illness. So, in the video you're about to see, I'm trying to educate my patient about the option that I'm offering. He's immediately resistant, as are many patients, towards the thought of having their medication given to them by injection once a month. Now, with that being said, some countries like the United Kingdom have as many as 50% of patients with schizophrenia on long-acting injectable therapy. And other studies in the peer-reviewed scientific literature report that as many as 80 to 90% of patients will accept a long-acting injectable therapy when we offer it in a particular way. So let's watch this first interaction where I'm using the usual approach which is respectful and very much focused on trying to convince him to accept the injections I'm recommending for his noncompliance. It sounds like there's some problems you're having with your father. Did I, did I hear that right? I don't know what his problem is. He says I'm not trying hard enough. I am trying. I feel like he treats me like a child. He doesn't trust me. So. Why is it that you, you feel he doesn't trust you? He asks me every day, did I take my medicine? He went behind my back and counted the pills. He accused me of not taking it all. I am taking it. Do you remember not taking them before you went to the hospital? Maybe that's why he's worried now. I didn't need them then, but in the hospital I said I would take them and now that's what I'm doing. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about your medicine today. The pills that you've been taking um, come also in a once a month injection. How, how would you feel about that? You mean a shot, right? Yes. I don't like shots. They hurt. No, I wouldn't want to do that. In my experience, um, I have some patients who say uh, it hurts and others say they don't feel any pain at all, and it's just a little discomfort. 
and what discomfort they do feel diminishes over time. I'd rather take the pills. Okay, why would you prefer the pills? Like I said, shots hurt, and what if I don't like the way I feel, I can't just stop the medicine. Okay, I, I can see your concern. And if you did have side effects, any new side effects on the injections, we could just cancel the next injection. I don't know, it's still gonna hurt. That's true. It may hurt, at least when you first start. My experience is everyone handles pain differently. You know, I have some patients who tell me they feel it hurts and others who say they don't feel much pain at all, just a little discomfort. And you know, you have two options as to where you get the injection on your body. And there's that benefit of not having to take pills every single day. Not having to take pills every day would be good, I guess. Yes, it would. Uh, you know, I think your father would be a lot less worried, wouldn't be looking over your shoulder. And um, if you gave me permission to talk to him, uh, he would know for certain that you're taking your medicine. Yes, I guess you can talk to him, but no one else. You know, if you accept my recommendation of the injection, you'd come in once a month, uh, you'd see me, you'd get your medicine all in one day, and uh, you wouldn't have to come back for another whole month. Uh -huh. And, you know, if, if it is something that you're not comfortable with, we can always cancel the next injection. I don't know, I'm not really ready. Can we talk about this later? Yeah, we can talk about it later. Um, I, I do have one thing to ask though, if you would just take a look at uh, this material and in it you'll find the risks and benefits associated with the once monthly injection option. Would you, would you have a look at that and we can discuss it next time we meet? Yeah, sure, next time. Okay. As you just saw, Harris's initial negative reaction to my recommendation never really changed over the course of our conversation. I did try to educate him from my experience, which indeed is based on research and not just my personal experience, but that didn't change his mind. Although I was certainly respectful and gentle, I still took the stance as that of an expert, you know, someone with superior knowledge, and I attempted more than once to convince Harris to accept the once monthly injectable treatment. Now let's look at the same patient, but with his doctor using LEAP to communicate the offer. LEAP stands for listen, empathize, agree, and partner. LEAP started out as an intensive short-term psychotherapeutic intervention. But 15 years ago, it evolved into a communication program that's been taught to tens of thousands of health care providers like yourselves and to family caregivers, among others. There are three other tools in addition to listen, empathize, agree, and partner. The three other tools include apologizing for specific things, delaying in giving your opinion, we're not rushing to give your expert opinion. And finally, giving your opinion in a humble way that gives the patient dignity and also models openness and flexibility. So let's look at the same scenario with Harris's doctor, but using the LEAP approach. And we'll discuss and highlight those aspects that were used after you've watched. So it sounds like you're having some problems with your father. He says I'm not trying hard enough. I am trying. I feel like he treats me like a child. He doesn't trust me. What you're saying is that um, he's treating you like a child and, and um, he doesn't trust you, is that right? Yes, that's right, he doesn't trust me. Well, how do you know he doesn't trust you? He asks me every day, did I take the medicine? He went behind my back and counted the pills. He accused me of not taking it all. I am taking it. You sound angry, are you? Yes, I'm mad, it's humiliating. I'm an adult, it's my life. So if I understand you, you're, you're, you're angry and, and feeling humiliated 
because he's treating you like a child and you're an adult and, and this is your life, right? Right. So why is he doing it? Well, yeah, you know, I promise I'll tell you why I think he's doing it. But before I do, I'd like to know why you, what you think the reason is that he's doing it. I have no idea. I promised I would take the medicine and I am. Well, I have an idea that might be helpful to you um, with, with respect to your father's accusations that you're not taking medicine. Do you want to hear it? Sure. What is it? Are you going to tell him to get off my back? Well, I promise I'll answer that question, but before I do, with your permission, um, I'd like to tell you about um, a recommendation that I actually was planning on making today. Yeah, sure. The pills that you've been taking also come in a once-a-month injection. What would you think about that, taking an injection once a month instead of the pills? You mean a shot, right? Yes, that's, that's what I'm talking about. How would you feel about that? I don't like shots. No, I wouldn't want to do that. I have a favor to ask you. C can you just fill it in a little bit more for, for me? Tell me what, what it is about shots that you don't like? They hurt, for one thing. And I can't just stop the medicine if there's a problem. It stays in my body for a whole month. Okay, so if I understand you, they, they hurt. And um, you can't just stop the medicine if you have a problem with it. Is that right? Yes, that's what I just said. Why are you repeating everything I say? Well, I'm sorry if it's irritating you. I can stop if you want me to. But I, I really just wanted to make sure that I understand what you're saying and that I, that I understand you correctly. With your permission, I have just one more question I want to ask. What is it? How do you think you'd feel if you took the shot once a month? I don't know. The whole idea scares me. I'd have no control. Well, I'd, I'd feel scared, too, if I was in your place, if I took your perspective. Um, and taking your perspective, I can see why you'd feel you'd have no control. So you agree? You don't think I should switch? Well, I, I promise I'll tell you my opinion about whether you should switch or not. But first, I'd like to make sure I understand your reasons. Would that be okay? Sure, but what don't you understand? Well, I think I do understand. Uh, the injections uh, hurt. You're scared that uh, you won't have control because the medicine's in your body for a whole month, right? Right. So you agree I shouldn't switch? I'll tell you what I think, but before I do, I, I, and I promise I'll tell you, I, I just want you to know that I think that your opinion about this is far more important than mine. But you're the doctor. People listen to you, not me. That's true, I am the doctor. And uh, most of the time, people like your father will listen to me when it comes to things like medicine. Um, but, you know, ultimately, Harris, you're the one who's going to make an informed decision about medication, whether or not you're going to take it and how you're going to take it. Well, I don't want the shot. That's my opinion. What do you think? Since you've asked me a couple of times, I'll, I'll tell you. But I want to start by apologizing for my opinion because it might be a little disappointing. And I could be wrong. You know, I don't know everything, but I think that if you did agree to the once a month injection, it would likely help with your father. So long as you gave me permission to be in contact with him, he would know whether or not you were taking the medication. Do you think you could give me permission to be in contact with him? But I thought you understood why I don't want shots. I think I do understand. They hurt um, and, and you wouldn't have any control, right? Right. I'm not going to try to convince you. I'm not going to argue with you about this. Um, this is your life. Uh, but again, since you asked, I do think this medicine would be helpful to you for several reasons. Um, at the very least, it'll help you with your father and his knowing that you're taking medicine. So no more pills? I guess I could give it a try. Okay. I'm a little bit surprised by how quickly you're changing your mind. Can I ask you why you'd be willing to give it a try? I know you care about me. You respect my opinions. You really let me talk and listen to me. 
a lot of times I feel like no one really cares what I think, but I know you do. And you're right, it would help with one thing. It would help with my father. I really appreciate your trust, Harris, thank you. Before uh, we make a final decision or you make a final decision, I think we should take a few minutes to talk about the, the various risks and benefits that are associated with this option. Can we do that? Sure, we can do that. As you can see, when I used Leap, the conversation was very different. Not once did I try and convince him of anything. And instead, I focused entirely on listening, understanding, and communicating his perspective, empathizing, and giving my opinion more as a trusted friend than the expert doctor. I'd like to start my comments by saying that much of what you just saw came from an actual transcript between myself and a patient of mine. Like many of my patients, Harris was having a conflict with his father, who was suspicious that his son was not taking his medication. The reason for his lack of trust was that Harris argues with his father, often telling him, I'm not sick, I don't need drugs. His father's suspicion was so great that he actually counted the pills in the bottle that Harris was taking. The video starts with the doctor reflecting back something Harris has just said. The doctor says, it sounded like there's some problems you're having with your father. And then he asks, did I hear that right? That's an example of reflective listening. His doctor did not react to what his patient said when he said, I'm not sick. He didn't say, for example, well, actually, Harris, you stopped taking medicine in the past, and that's probably why your father is so concerned. Reflective listening, the L in the LEAP acronym, has as its goals the following two things. First, listening with respect and lack of judgment, and then asking the person, did I understand you correctly? In fact, reflective listening and the way that it's taught in the LEAP program is the cornerstone to building a strong therapeutic alliance. Strong therapeutic alliances are associated with more positive attitudes about treatment, improved compliance with medication, and a reduction in relapse. Because it's the cornerstone of the LEAP approach, reflective listening is a very important tool to learn. It's not quite as easy to learn as some people think. Let me point out some other instances of reflective listening in the video and think about what you might have said if this was your patient. After his doctor, offers a long-acting injectable treatment, and Harris says no, and they discuss it for a moment. The doctor then asks Harris, what is your reason for not wanting the injection? Harris says, they hurt, and I can't stop the medicine if I have a problem. It stays in my body for a whole month. Then you hear the doctor say, that's true, so you wouldn't want to switch to monthly injections because they hurt, and if you had any problems with it, you wouldn't be able to stop right away. Did I get that right? Harris then says, yes, that's what I just said. Why are you repeating everything I say? Well, you and I know why I'm repeating some of the things he's saying. I'm using reflective listening. But I go on and use one of the other leap tools. In particular, I use the apology tool. Now there's only one letter, A, in the leap acronym, and that actually stands for agree. But apologizing is just as important. When using LEAP, we want to apologize for those things we say that create tension or disappointment. Often I find myself disagreeing with some core beliefs I hold as a professional. For example, that my patient has a diagnosis. That contradicts an equally strong belief my patient holds, that there's absolutely nothing wrong with him. In such instances, we feel it's very useful for us to apologize for our conflicting opinion. Let me remind you about what I actually said. Thank you. C can you just fill it in a little bit more for, for me? Harris complains that I'm repeating everything, and I say, I'm sorry, I'll stop repeating if you like. I just wanted to make sure I understood you correctly. 
I have one more question, if that's okay. Okay, so if I understand you, they, they hurt, and um, you can't just stop the medicine if you have a problem with it. Is that right? Yes, that's what I just said. Why are you repeating everything I say? Well, I'm sorry if it's irritating you. I can stop if you want me to. But I, I really just wanted to make sure that I understand what you're saying and that I, that I understand you correctly. With your permission, I have just one more question I want to ask. By immediately apologizing and then explaining that my sole purpose was to understand his perspective better, we see him become less tense. I then ask him permission to ask one more question, and he immediately agreed that I could ask. Before I go any further, you might think that LEAP takes longer than the approach that you're currently using. In fact, studies and my personal experience show that it doesn't take any longer to use LEAP than what we typically do. Now, another tool that's not in the LEAP acronym is the DELAY tool. What are we delaying? Simply put, we are not in a hurry to give our opinion when we think it might cause tension or conflict. You may have noticed that several times Harris asked me for my opinion, and I didn't rush to answer. Now, with other patients who have insight, I would answer. I would quickly answer their question. For example, if the patient asked me, so do you think I should take the medicine? I would immediately answer, yes. In my professional opinion, I think this would be a very good thing for you to try. In this case, there's nothing gained by delaying because the patient has insight into his illness. And I wouldn't hesitate to talk about the diagnosis because I'm dealing with a patient who is aware that he's ill. But in Harris's case, when dealing with someone who lacks awareness of their mental illness, giving my opinion, giving it quickly, typically results in my joining the growing number of people in this patient's life who argue with him about whether or not he's mentally ill. His parents, his brother, uncle, doctors, and others who keep telling him he's sick while he keeps arguing, no, I'm not sick. That's why we delay giving our opinion when using the LEAP approach. We don't want to join the conflict. We don't want to be seen as the enemy. It's also a way in which we remain non-threatening. You know, it's a humble approach for a physician or other healthcare professional to say, as I did in the video you just saw, I promise I'll tell you what I think, but I'd like to hear more about what you think. And also to say things like, your opinion, in fact, is more important than mine because you will decide whether or not to take the medicine. Let's look back at a couple of instances in which I delayed giving my opinion. How do you think you'd feel if you took the shot once a month? I don't know. The whole idea scares me. I'd have no control. Well, I'd, I'd feel scared too if I was in your place, if I took your perspective. Um, and taking your perspective, I can see why you'd feel you'd have no control. So you agree? You don't think I should switch? Well, I, I promise I'll tell you my opinion about whether you should switch or not. But first, I'd like to make sure I understand your reasons. Would that be okay? Sure, but what don't you understand? Well, I think I do understand. Uh, the injections uh, hurt. You're scared that uh, you won't have control because the medicine's in your body for a whole month, right? Right. So you agree I shouldn't switch? I'll tell you what I think, but before I do, I, I, and I promise I'll tell you, I, I just want you to know that I think that your opinion about this is far more important than mine. In these two instances, by not rushing to give my professional opinion, I stayed out of the argument that Harris frequently has with his family and all the doctors who preceded me. I also convey the very real and truthful view that my patient's opinions are very important to me and in fact in the end are the opinions that are most important. This is a way of empowering patients and if I'm honest with myself it's actually a way in which I'm acknowledging the power 
that they actually hold. When family or hospital staff are not supervising them, they will do exactly what it is they think they should do. And if they don't believe they're ill, frequently, that means they won't take their medicine. So in a very practical way, our patients' opinions, in the end, are the ones that matter the most in terms of affecting their behavior and in terms of determining what it is they will actually do. By saying this, we're also telling our patients that we want to partner with them and that we're not here to force them to do anything. Now that being said, there are times when we do have the power to force our patients to take medicine. But even then, it's important for us to lay the groundwork to prepare the patient for those longer periods of time when they alone have the power to decide. And if instead of deciding on their own, they turn to a trusted doctor or other healthcare professional to discuss what they're about to do, stop taking their medication, for example, the end result is usually a patient who is compliant with all the treatments being offered and honest with their doctor about what it is they're actually planning to do. Among the goals of the LEAP approach is creating an open and honest relationship with our patients. And one of the ways we do that is to empathize. Now, if you're watching this video, I feel confident you know how to express empathy. So why do you need to watch a video about empathy? The answer is you don't. But if you're watching this video because you're interested in the LEAP approach, let me tell you what we do with empathy. When you're using LEAP, you use empathy strategically. And by strategic empathy, what I mean is, we make certain we empathize with our patients around those emotions and those feelings that create tension, discord, and distance between them and the people who are trying to help them. Let's look at an instance of that. You sound angry, are you? Yes, I'm mad, it's humiliating. I'm an adult, it's my life. By saying that I'd feel angry and humiliated too if I were in his place, I'm joining Harris in that experience. This makes it easier for him to be honest with me. If, for example, in the future, he's having doubts about continuing with treatment. Why? Well, because I didn't tell him he shouldn't feel angry or humiliated and add that, you know, his father was just trying to help him. Instead, I strategically made sure I empathized with how he felt when his father counted the pills in the bottle. Now let's look at another instance of my use of LEAP. Harris asked me several times for my opinion. What do I think? Let's look at one of those instances. So you agree? You don't think I should switch? Well, I, I promise I'll tell you my opinion about whether you should switch or not. As you just saw, I promised Harris that I would answer his question. I asked him if we could talk further, and then I asked for permission to delay telling him my opinion. He agreed. He agreed to wait. And later, he asked me for my opinion again. Right. So you agree I shouldn't switch? I'll tell you what I think, but before I do, I, I, and I promise I'll tell you, I, I just want you to know that I think that your opinion about this is far more important than mine. Again, as you just saw, I delayed my opinion by first promising to answer his question. Then I communicated my respect for his opinion. Soon after, Harris asked me yet again whether I thought he should take the injection. Let's watch when he asks me. Well, I don't want the shot. That's my opinion. What do you think? Since you've asked me a couple of times, I'll, I'll tell you. But I want to start by apologizing for my opinion because it might be a little disappointing. And I could be wrong. You know, I don't know everything. But I think that if you did agree to the once a month injection, it would likely help with your father. So long as you gave me permission to be in contact with him, he would know whether or not you were taking the medication. What you just saw was me giving my opinion using what we call the three A's. In English, 
The first A stands for apologize. And what am I apologizing for? I am apologizing for my conflicting or contrary opinion that my patient doesn't want to hear. And in this case, it's that I really do think he should try the once monthly injection. The second A stands for acknowledging my fallibility. In other words, acknowledging I could be wrong. I don't know everything. You don't have to use all three elements of the opinion tool, but by apologizing for our opinion and acknowledging that we might be wrong, we help the patient maintain his dignity. We also model flexibility in our thinking, which is what we're hoping to see in our patient, some willingness to consider alternative points of view. And the third A was agreeing to disagree. I did that when I said, I don't want to argue with you about this and I'm not going to. The other interesting thing I'd like to note here is that by delaying several times, I was able to say to Harris, since you've asked me a couple of times, in other words, by delaying, I was able to say to him, since you really want to know my opinion, I'll give it. And who does Harris have to blame for my opinion if he doesn't like it? Only himself. And finally, throughout the interaction you've watched, you've heard several instances where I've agreed with him that it would be a good thing if he and his father were not arguing. I linked the goal that Harris had, as he put it, to get his father off his back, to taking a once a month injection. So to summarize, in this brief interaction about a treatment offer, you heard me listen reflectively several times, empathize strategically with those feelings that created distance between Harris and the people that want to help him. For example, with regards to the negative feelings about taking the medicine, you heard me agree. Remember the A in LEAP, that to not be in conflict with his father would be a good thing. We agreed on that. And you heard us partner on trying a once a month medicine. You also heard me apologize for repeating everything he was saying and give my opinion using the three A's. I apologize for the opinion itself because the opinion might be hurtful or disappointing. I acknowledged I could be wrong and I agreed to not argue. I agreed to disagree. I said at the beginning of this video that portions of the dialogue you just heard came from an actual transcript between a real patient and myself. My patient that this video is based on did in fact accept the long-acting injectable therapy after a conversation almost as brief as the one you've just heard. Remember earlier I said LEAP rarely takes any longer than what we typically do. To finish the story, the actual patient that Harris is based on, came to his first two injection appointments with no problem. He did, however, miss the third appointment. When I called him after discovering that he missed his appointment, I didn't tell him my opinion about whether he should come in or not. Instead, I continued to use LEAP, and he decided to come in for his appointment all on his own. So LEAP is not used only for treatment offers, it's really a way of communicating that creates an ongoing partnership with our patients, one in which they feel that we truly care about them as human beings, not just as professionals, and that we're genuinely interested in their opinions, and we honestly respect them, even when their opinions are in conflict with ours. In the end, LEAP is focused on helping our patients by winning on the strength of our relationship, rather than trying to win on the strength of our arguments. I'd like to end by thanking you for taking time out of your busy schedules to watch this video to see if LEAP might be something of value to you in your work with patients who have schizophrenia and other associated disorders. And I sincerely hope this was helpful to you. And if you're interested in learning more about LEAP, I hope you'll use the resources that were made available to you. And you can also feel free to contact me directly through the LEAP Institute website. Thank you for watching.